So iOS 16 just officially came out. So I want to make a pretty quick tutorial guide on all the cool features within iOS 16. Now this is not going to be all of them, but a majority of the new ones, I want to go ahead and break them down. So if you're very new to iOS or very new to iOS 16, this is essentially how to do it. If you want to install this update, I would not recommend installing the beta, but if it's officially out by the time you're watching this, all you have to do is make your way over to your settings panel. I'm going to click general, I'm going to click software update, and you should be able to see the iOS 16 update on your phone if it's supported. On only the iPhones 8, 8 Plus, iPhone 10, and newer are supported with this version of software. So keep that in mind if you have an iPhone 7 or below, it's not really supported here. So very sad, but there's really not much we can do about it. Now starting off, once you have it installed, one of the coolest improvements or updates within this update is actually with the lock screen. So this is probably one of the areas you want to go ahead and modify first. So you will see that your lock screen will have a little bit of a different style of text. You'll see kind of everything else look the same though. But if you want to customize your lock screen and add you know, widgets and everything, all you have to do is hold down on your lock screen like this, just like how I did. So you want to hold down on it and you'll come into this panel. Now here you can go ahead and see any other lock screens you've created. If you haven't created one, you'll pretty much only see the one lock screen you have. So what you can do here is you can click the plus button on the bottom right and you can start building out your lock screen. So what this looks like is, first of all, they kind of have it in steps. Either you can use a featured setup that they've already created or you can go ahead and bring your own wallpaper in. So if you click photos right here, you can go ahead and bring in a wallpaper you've created or you have or whatever the case is. If not, you can always utilize one of the existing, you know, kind of layouts they have. So in this case, we can go ahead and utilize like one of these types of things. Maybe it's not even the most appropriate thing, but regardless, what you can do here is you can go ahead and starting off the top, you can click on these type of widgets and you can go ahead and modify whichever widgets that are on these top panels. So here you can go ahead and let's say you want, instead of, Let's go and click back up here. Let's say you want to go ahead and bring in a clock thing up there. We can go and choose a clock type of setup and you will see that top widget has now changed and you can go and change it to whichever one. Now, maybe you don't need the clock one because you already have the time below, but maybe you want to go and change it to calendar. You can change it to this one. There's a lot of different capability up there. Now with the text and time right here, you can choose here and you can go and modify the color. You can modify the strong text type of color, whatever it is. You can change the font style as well. So there's a lot of different customizability right there. But one of the coolest things is with this plus button down here, what you can do here is you can actually go ahead and pretty much add certain widgets to your specific panel. So here are some suggestions that Apple will give you. So you can go ahead and put in like this little timer, whatever this weather thing is there. So we now added this little you know widget for the little thing with right there. We can go and click batteries and we can add a battery widget right there, which shows the battery life of our device. If we want to go ahead and add our fitness ring, well, we can go and add a fitness ring right there too. And I think those are all the ones, but I think you can put four small ones there so we can probably whichever other ones you want to add you can go ahead and customize it that way too and that will give you a little bit more flavor for the most part for your device so i think that's really cool as you can see you can also click down here you can also strengthen the text make it lighter make it lower whatever it is but at the end of it you should have a little setup like this you can go and click done and you can go and choose into your little panel like this and now you'll have this type of setup now this will also change your lock screen as well if you ever want to change back to your other one all you have to do is hold down on your lock screen here you can switch between them like this so if i wanted to choose this one i can click here i can go and swipe up and it gives me that type of wallpaper as well now that is it for that now with the home screen everything's the same for the most part you have your ipad icons you have widgets you can add you have all sorts of stuff one of the more interesting things though if you have an iphone that has a notch the spotlight search button down here is now right here if you want to go ahead and instead of swiping down you can go ahead and just click the spotlight search button there and you'll come into this panel so i think that's really cool that's a cool little feature apple added here for the notched iphones but another big feature within iOS 16 is actually within iMessage. So if we make our way over to iMessage right here, you can see, first of all, let me go ahead and remove this. That's kind of awkward. We actually have a lot more capability built in within iMessage. We have the ability of unsending iMessages, basically unreading iMessages, and editing sent iMessages. Now they have to be within 15 minutes, and I don't think the film functionality is working right now, like this second, but I think when it officially comes out, it's going to be working much, much better. But basically, let's say I went ahead and sent somebody a text, and maybe I want to say hi, but I accidentally texted this, right? So what I could do is when I go ahead and send this text out, if you want to go ahead and edit the message and or unsend it, all you have to do is hold down on the iMessage like this and you can click undo send. Now that's going to undo the send on their end and on your end. 
Now, it's still technically there on our end, so I'm not too sure if Apple needs to fix this on their end, but essentially that's one thing you can do. On top of it, you have the ability of unreading a message and also editing a message. So the same exact thing, we can go and click here, we can click edit, and now we can go ahead and edit this message. So now you can go and type in whatever you wanted to do, and that's another cool thing that we have. So I can go and send this out, and that's another cool little feature that we have within this specific update. So iMessage brings a lot of cool different things. I'm really happy about it. You can also recover some deleted messages too if you go and hold down on a message. If you click on the three dots up here, you click edit pins or you click edit. So there's a lot of cool functionality within iOS 16 just within iMessages. Now there's also some cool features and everything added within the settings panel. So specifically one thing I want to hit on is actually within photos. So one of the cool things within photos is essentially we had this little hidden folder option down in our little albums category. So if we click albums, there's this little hidden folder. Unfortunately, it's not password protected, but now within iOS 16, we do have the ability of getting that password protected, which is so cool. So to do this, what we want to do is we want to scroll down into photos, which is right here. We can then go ahead and scroll down and right here where it says use passcode, what you can do is you can go ahead and enable this as your passcode. And that's another cool thing. It'll basically use a passcode supported on your phone to actually do this. So that's another awesome thing. On top of that, going back into our settings, we actually have the ability of seeing our Wi-Fi password. So what we can do here is we can go and click on Wi-Fi. We can go and click on our Wi-Fi name and we want to go and click on the I and you will see right here we have our password. All you have to do is go and click on your passcode like that, and you will essentially see the password of your device. So that's another awesome, cool thing that I'm really loving, that I actually am looking forward to for iOS 16. On top of that, going back into our photos application, we do have the ability of deleting duplicate photos. So right here, you can see hidden, we have this little duplicates option. We can click duplicates and we can actually select all, and these will automatically find, you know, photos for us that are duplicates. And we can go ahead and delete those photos as well. It's super easy. And that's another cool thing that Apple, you know, went ahead and put in. But as some of you may know, we actually had the capability of pretty much copying text. So if you have an iPhone XS or newer, you have the ability of copying text text from an image. But now we actually have the ability of copying text from videos and we can also copy text straight from the camera application. So if you're hovering over some text within your iPhone, you can go hold it down and you should be able to go ahead and at least see and copy that text from that specific image. So that's another really cool thing. And speaking about the camera, specifically the front camera, if you have an iPhone 13 and possibly an iPhone 12, Face ID will now work in landscape mode as well. So if you're in landscape mode, you should be able to, you know, have your face ID working there. So that's another really cool thing that Apple put in, which I'm really, really happy about. On top of that, speaking about cameras, you should be able to, on a majority of iPhones, you should be able to use your phone as a webcam of some sort. So if you have a specific feature, Ventura and iOS 16, you should be able to go ahead and use your iPhone as an actual webcam for your phone and your Mac. So that's another really big deal. It'll probably have a lot of people probably picking up iPhones instead of, you know, webcams to use on their Macs, because I can probably imagine a lot of people are going to end up doing something like that. And those are a lot of the main features. Now, there's still going to be features being rolled out, you know, here and you know, here and there. So what I would recommend doing as often as you can, especially if you're a beginner to iOS, I would recommend updating your phone as often as possible. You want to make sure, especially if you're installing the latest version of a new version of software, being on the most recent version of software is always going to be the best bet. So what you can do here is you can go and click on general. You want to go and click on software update. And all you want to do is make sure you're up to date on software. If you can update your software as often as possible, that is probably going to be the best case scenario for a lot of people out there. If you're many generations of software behind, you're going to have some issues. So that's pretty much what I recommend doing as often as you can. And that pretty much covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.